Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the Ratliff Mandolin's Weekly Production Diary. Uh, this week I'm working on mandolin number 10 in the batch. Uh, and uh, although it's number 10 in the batch, this is the first mandolin that's getting its strings and hardware in the batch. It is a master model and I have polished it out and I have fit the bridge feet and so now I'm getting ready to install the keys. And I thought, boy, wouldn't it be nice if I uh, just did a little bit of an episode about all of the steps it takes to put these keys in and make them work and not bind and just, uh, what does it take to put a set of keys in a brand new mandolin? And so that's what we're going to do with this episode. We're going to discuss all of the steps that it takes to make sure keys go into a mandolin peg head and work the way they're supposed to. The whole process of ensuring that the keys are going to fit and work the way they're supposed to starts way back in the early construction stages of building the neck. And I have here a neck that's uh, still rough but mostly done and I'll describe a few of the key points um, to this whole process. Number one, when I'm sawing the peg head shape out, I have this jig here. It's the mandolin neck fits in there and the this jig is designed so that the fretboard gluing surface is more or less parallel with the tabletop. Now you have this slope on this piece of neck wood and so when you run this thing through the bandsaw to saw this shape out obviously now all of these angles right here are going to be at 90 degrees to the tabletop and not 90 degrees to this surface but to this surface so that is a key factor in how to position these uh, tuners on this peg head now the next couple of things I'm going to show you are the jigs that I use to actually drill the peg holes right, let's take them one at a time this is a, took a lot of time and effort to build this thing, but it's a bent piece of quarter inch steel with holes drilled in the appropriate places, a nice center line fix that fits down into the truss rod slot. The neck goes in here, gets locked down. Actually, there's a couple of locking systems things and I'll show you those in just a second and fits in there and then we can go right straight down through that this series of holes right here to put our keys in the right place all of that whole mess right here will go on to this box which is basically just a big U channel made out of plywood and sits right like this right here at the proper angle which again holds the peg head now parallel to the tabletop this goes into the drill press and I drill right down through each of these holes in this piece of steel bang 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 and this is a clamp that holds that peg head very tightly against that just in case there's a slight angle difference which sometimes you'll get when you're uh, sanding the peg head face uh, of the rough neck smooth and sometimes those although you cut everything at the same angle on a bandsaw sometimes those angles drift just a little bit and sometimes you need to hold that end up there really good so that's why that clamp is there it usually winds up being right like that. Anyway, after you've got them in here, drill through the holes, take it back out, and amazingly enough, you have a peg head with the holes in the proper place. And now we are ready to make 100% sure that those keys fit. And the best way to do that is simply just Put a set of keys in and see what it looks like. 
And the two things that we are looking for are how the buttons fit and how they're how accessible they are and number two how these tuners uh, shafts line up now although this thing is should be perfect not always occasionally you'll fit one in and you'll sight down it like this right here and you'll see that one of those tuners will Instead of all lined up exactly the same, one of them will be lifted off to the side just a little bit. Don't ask me why, but I've run hundreds of tuners through that. About one or two out of ten will move a little bit. I don't know if the drill bit hits something in the wood or just the grain of the wood will cause that drill bit to want to lean a certain way or something. But it happens. When it does, you sight down through there and you got one sticking out just a little funny. I take a uh, round chainsaw file, if it's not much, or a round mini rasp and just oblong that hole out a little bit over so that uh, and just keep testing it back and forth so that when I fit those keys up there, those shafts all line up just perfect and as you go in and out, you can tell if they fit or not and maybe one of them's out this way as well and usually you can just shine, uh, slide them in there and just see and uh, take a pretty decent guess that okay they're all good or I need to scoot this one this way or that way so I either scoot them th you know one way or another this way and one way or another this way to make sure that they're they're all in there without any kind of tension on them and then the next thing that you want to look at is, uh, like I said, these, uh, these buttons need to be accessible and kind of even. And although I have a pattern, I hand, obviously you saw that jig earlier, I, I, this shape right here, I hand saw on a band saw and they're never exactly the same. So we want to smooth this up. Let's go in the other room and I'll show you how to do that. So I have here one of these sanders, drum sanders, and it goes up and down. And if I set the fingerboard down on its neck, then this sander being at right angles will be at right angles where we were before. Same as putting the thing in the jig that holds it upside down at right angles. And I will sand on this thing here and test fit. And hold that up. Okay, I need just a little more right there. Sometimes I'll take a pencil and mark just that one spot. A little more. Smooth it out. Make sure everything's really pretty until both base and treble fits. I have a nice even amount of button left to, to get to and they slide in and out very smoothly and I know they're not bound so uh, that's when I will mark them and you'll see some of these in some of these videos they'll have KCD on them and that means they're key checked that means I've, I've done this job right here I always mark them when I've done when I've done that job and that way I know that it's done I can go ahead and shoot finish. I can do whatever I want to with this neck. It is, the keys are going to be functional. I should probably mention at this point that most of the tuner manufacturers have comparable length shaft buttons here so that this swoop is more or less the same on all of these mandolins and you can interchange tuners with the exception of the uh, expensive Waverly tuners, this long button right here is usually just a tad shorter than the other tuner makers. So if you're going to order a mandolin and you want the Waverly tuners, best to say something early in the process so that we can test fit a set of Waverly's instead of a uh, uh, test fit a set of Grover's which is what I normally use. I've used all kinds of stuff but right now I'm using Grover's 
and I have some Godas and I've used Shaller in the past, they're good tuners as well. But, uh, but I have found that if you use the wave release, it's really best if you can just shave a little more out of this area right here so that that longer, the longest shaft, uh, which is shorter on wave release than it is any of the others, will fit and you have access to that tuner button without it being really uncomfortable. So, again, if you're going to order a mandolin and it really matters to you what brand of tuners is on there, you need to make a, make a comment about it early, early, early in the process. Oh, one other thing I need to mention is the fact that this pig head will need ferrules. And ferrules are those little collars that go around these upper shafts, like that right there. And so these holes right now are currently drilled the size of these shafts. And they will need a bigger hole drilled only so far down for that ferrule to go into. And so that's the next step in the construction of this neck and its preparation for the tuners. And I'll mention that I have a special drill bit that has a pilot shaft on the end that will follow that smaller hole down in there and drill a bigger hole that's centered on the smaller hole and that bigger hole is for the ferrule to slip down in and then the tuner can come up through the smaller hole here and all of the holes are lined up and everything works out perfectly. So I have a special bit to do that. Now, now we move on to a finished mandolin. That's all we're going to do to the mandolin during the construction. All of the keys are fit and the button shafts are good and we're good to go. So that's the last time I look at that until now. Uh, and now we have basically everything still in the same place. The only big difference that we have is that there's finish on this now. And the finish is the final product. And I want to be very, very careful not to chip this finish. And uh, let's see, let me explain. I've got a hole in this block of wood. And I've shot finish over the peg head surface. And boom, and it build up, but it's not went down in that hole where it gets. So this tutor is going to fit down in there, but it's going to bind just a little bit maybe because of what fin overspray went down in there. What I really want to avoid is test fitting this thing in and out and catching something and chipping a big chip off of that finish. And trust me, it will happen if you're not super careful. So to, to keep that from happening before I do anything at all, I have a countersink here. It's a five-bladed countersink. I went and found, instead of the normal three-bladed one, I got a five-bladed countersink so that I can go down here and just ease that finish out of the very lip of that hole. I don't care if it's, you know, ten thousandths on this side. It's not going to chip. I just want it out of that very lip of this hole. And so that's what we're going to do right now is take this countersink and just ease in there and just get all of that finish out there uh, on that very corner of that hole so that it won't chip when we start putting the actual keys in and that sort of thing. Just like this right here. Very, very gentle. both sides and now that we have all of that finish off of that very edge and we're not too worried about it being chipped we can take other drill bits the appropriate size and run down through those holes and get out any of the excess overspray or any glue or any just clean the hole out to make sure that the there's nothing happened during the construction process that's going to keep those keys from going down in there and fitting uh, smoothly and not have anything in there to bind them up so now there are good clean holes with no chips and it's time to 
put the ferrules in and we do that believe it or not out on the drill press now I'm going to use this drill press more as a press instead of a drill press and to that end I have a funny little uh, machined out piece that I'll show you how it works in just a second and a piece shaped like a mandolin peg head with two things of leather glued onto it to pad that back of that peg head. Let me show you how it works. This thing will go in here. We'll tighten it down. And the ferrule itself will fit right there. And we'll be able to just press it right down into the mandolin peg head. And now all eight ferrules have been installed. And it is time to give the keys one last very close inspection. Uh, for quality control, I like to check and make sure that there's no spurs on the gear cogs or anything like that. And I usually like to just put a little drop of oil on all of the contact points so that everything rolls as smooth as it possibly can before I gently slip them down in there and set the attachment screw holes and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. I have this homemade tool as you can see I made it out of an old broken drill chuck that has a shaft in it that's ground a special way to actually fit the back of those tuners and as I install the tuners and then press this tool right down on that, it kind of centers uh, right up on the tuner and puts me a little bump right into the mandolin exactly in the center of the hole that will take the mounting screws. And the end result is we have mounting holes in the tuners. We have run through there and duplicated those holes on the back of the peg head. Now we have little dimples or bumps. And we take a drill, the appropriate size drill bits loaded in there with a piece of tape wrapped around there at the spot that I want to stop so I don't drill too far and drill all the way through. And we're going to drill into those dimples that we just got through putting in the back of the peg head to uh, make the screw holes to mount the tuners. Now, after drilling those holes, I'm going to go back over them with my uh, reamer here and uh, countersink is it, what it actually is and do the same thing I did for the bigger holes earlier. I want to just kind of clean out all of the trash and stuff so that I don't even chip the finish around that little tiny hole. Now at this point I'm getting ready to do the final installation on the keys and one of the last things I do before, the, uh, before I actually start putting the screws to it is I will uh, put something down in the hole to make the mounting screws go a little easier. I used to 
put a drop of machine oil down uh, in the, each of these holes that I just cleaned out and then I uh, kind of graduated to uh, a little dab of grease but I think over, uh, years and years ago I kind of migrated down to I put some wax in the holes and in fact I had this can of wax until it's pretty much dried up and about a year ago I went and bought some butcher's bowling alley wax and I just take the tip of a razor knife and give me a little dab of wax and put it right down in that hole and that way the screw goes in without me having to force it. I'm always afraid at this point that if I have to force that screw, put a lot of pressure on it, if I slip, ah, I'm going to slip and I'm going to scratch the back of this peg head in an irreparable way and I certainly don't want to do that so I want to do everything I can do when I'm putting these mountain screws on to uh, lessen the possibility or lessen the, the intensity that I have to, to push on that screw. I just want it to go in. Uh, I don't want to, I don't have to fight it at all. So that's what I'm going to do now is put a little wax inside of each of those holes and put the keys on. And now all of the holes have had wax put in them, so it is time to do the deed. And now the keys are installed. They've been installed in such a manner as to eliminate any kind of stress or warping or binding uh, that would perhaps keep them from being smooth turning and, and that sort of thing. They all turn with the minimum amount of effort and I think we've done a good job and they should last a lifetime. So now you know there's a lot more to it than just opening up a box and slapping a set of keys on. There's a lot of thought uh, given to those keys way back early in the construction all the way through to pretty close to one of the last things you do. And so I am going to go back in there and work on the bridge a little bit and the tailpiece and try to get some strings on that mandolin uh, so that you can hear a tune played on it. Here I go. So by the time the end of the week rolls around, all the strings are on it, all the hardware is on it, and she is ready to play. How about we give that mandolin a test spin and see what it sounds like? I'll be back next week on the next episode of the Ratliff Mandolin's Weekly Production Diary to give you an update on where the batch is 
and maybe a, a few more yard sale items, come across some more books to sell and some other stuff. And so why don't you come back next week at the same time and see us as we put out a new episode of the Ratliff Mandolin's weekly production diary. Hit the like and subscribe button and all that stuff and we'll look for you next week. Thank you.